In this section, we'll look at the economy during World War II. First, World War II was the most deadly war in history. Estimates of total deaths are difficult, but probably in the realm of 70, 75 million, the majority of uh, civilians. Europe was left devastated, its infrastructure completely destroyed. Japan was likewise destroyed. It's difficult to uh, determine total economic cost, but estimates have been as high as $3.5 trillion for the United States alone, adjusted for inflation today. The economy exploded, finally ending once and for all the Great Depression. The graph here shows gross domestic product, but the gross national product, which included the impact of trade, went from $91.3 billion in 1939 to $166.5 billion in 1945, adjusted for inflation. The index for manufacturing increased 96% over the same period. Agricultural production increased 22%. Transportation services increased 109%. By the end of the war, unemployment was far from the problem. A shortage of labor was more the main issue. Driving the economic boom was, of course, government spending. Not only in direct military expenditures, but also in defense contracts to private employers. The United States spent more than $320 billion during World War II. Doesn't sound like a whole lot when you talk about billions of dollars today, but that came to 250 million dollars per day, which was 10 times the cost of World War I in real dollars. I think the best thing, uh, the best example of how much it cost was the cost of World War II was almost twice as much as the United States had spent in its entire existence to that point, which is truly amazing. It was also truly amazing what American industry produced, a true miracle of production. The U.S. industrial output doubled in only five years. American factories produced almost 270,000 aircraft during the war. Merchant ship production went from only 1 million tons in 1941 to a peak of 19 million tons. The desperate need for large cargo ships to move men and equipment to the battlefield uh, was probably the best example of the American production. This was uh, involved the so-called Liberty ships. 18 American shipyards built over 2,700 Liberty ships from 1941 to 1945. Mass produced through a single design. Each was almost 450 feet long and 57 feet wide, displacing over 14,000 tons. Amazingly, a ship of such size could be built and completed in less than two weeks. The Liberty ship made one industrialist, Henry Kaiser, famous. Kaiser perfected the design of the Liberty ship, and his shipbuilding plant constructed one in only four days. Kaiser later left after the war and led the production of aluminum and steel, uh, and eventually went into health care, where uh, the, his company, Kaiser Permanente, remains uh, huge today. Because of all the massive expansion of the military, the United States began construction of its military headquarters just outside Washington, D.C., the famous Pentagon. It began construction in 1941, and it went on until 1943 when it was finally finished. One of the largest office buildings in the world, the Pentagon had 6.5 million square feet of space and surrounded a five-acre central plaza. The Pentagon, of course, still houses the Department of Defense today and was, of course, attacked on September 11, 2001 when uh, a terrorist uh, guided plane crashed into it. The American miracle of production included whole new industries, which, by the way, exploded after the war. The synthetic rubber industry was certainly one. Given the shortage of rubber from southeastern Asia, which was, of course, controlled by the Japanese, the U.S. developed synthetic rubber that worked well for tires. By the end of the war, the U.S. is producing almost a million tons of synthetic rubber. The plastics industry, which was pioneered in the 1930s, exploded during World War II. A new industry of nylon allowed more durable parachutes. Because of the need for nylon in the military, however, restrictions were placed on the use of nylon stockings, which American women found made their legs look better. The war led to developments of radar, sonar, rockets, 
and the foundation for the first computers, which were used to uh, help crack the German secret codes. In the medical field, the war brought new antibiotics, which were quite rare before the war, improvements in blood transfusions, and new heart and lung surgeries. There's also tremendous advancement in plastic surgery. After initially struggling to create the government apparatus to sort of guide the miracle of production, FDR eventually settled upon the War Production Board, the WPB. The War Production Board had almost dictatorial powers over the American economy. It could limit and regulate production not only of military goods, but also of scarce civilian goods as well. The WPB had a, had a dozen regional officers and over a hundred field offices. It assigned priorities and allotted scarce resources and arranged such things as scrap metal drives. The leader of the War Production Board was Donald Nelson. Nelson, however, angered many in Washington who said he allowed large corporations to manipulate priorities to their economic advantage. Congress began to hold hearings into Nelson's leadership. FDR then decided it was time for a change and began to organize new uh, bodies to sort of coordinate the economy. First, he uh, organized the Office of Economic Stabilization and, in 1943, the Office of War Mobilization. FDR selected James Burns to lead these new organizations, and in that capacity, Burns was so powerful, people referred to him as the Assistant President. Working under the umbrella leadership of first the War Production Board and later the Office of War Mobilization were a number of agencies with more specific duties. Most, notably, uh, most notable was the Office of Price Administration, the OPA. Because of the scarcity of civilian goods and the full employment, the government had to really guard against inflation. The OPA, therefore, imposed price and rent controls. It also con, uh, controlled key resources, such as gasoline. During the war, service stations could not accept OPA, could not accept money. They had to accept, rather, OPA ration cards. This, of course, led to a black market. Restrictions on wages led to uh, employers to offer uh, health insurance, or help paying health insurance, which was the beginning of employer-based health insurance, which, of course, exploded after the war as well. Another agency was the National War Labor Board, modeled after a similar board in World War I and quite stronger than the National Labor Relations Board created during the New Deal. The National War Labor Board was uh, created to assure that strikes didn't disrupt the war production. It could issue clear mandates to both management and unions. Throughout the war, the National War Labor Board tended to, of course, strengthen the position of labor. Of course, all the government spending meant that taxes had to rise to pay for it. The War Revenue Act of 1942 was described by FDR as, quote, the greatest tax bill in American history. It was designed to raise more than $7 billion additional revenue annually, a sum exceeding total federal expenditures in any peacetime year before 1941. The measure increased the combined corporate income tax to a maximum of 40% and raised the excess profit tax to 90%. It increased excise taxes and levied a, a host of new taxes. It dramatically increased estate and gift taxes. One of its most revolutionary aspects was extending the income tax to, to uh, tap lower incomes and not just the wealthier ones. For the higher incomes, the War Revenue Act of 1942 uh, had tax rates that exceeded 90 percent. As an in interesting sidebar, the War Revenue Act of 1942 was when the U.S. government began its monthly federal withholding of taxes. It needed to have more of a steady re uh, stream of taxes coming in every month, and so you didn't just pay your taxes once a year, you paid the taxes drawn from your paycheck every every year, every month rather. While the higher and expanded taxes were critical to pay for all the increased spending, it didn't cover all the cost, of course. The United States, therefore, had to issue war bonds, and, and that means going to debt to pay for the remainder. In 1945, the U.S. had its greatest debt ever relative to the size of the economy. I repeat that. The greatest debt ever relative to the size of the economy. Greater, of course, than it is today. Uh, that year, the debt was 110% of gross domestic product. 
the gross national debt grew from $49 billion in 1941 to over a uh, quarter trillion dollars in 1945. We have, by the way, the, the uh, largest debt in, in inflation adjusted dollars today, but our size of our economy uh, relative to it is, is bigger as well. This concludes the uh, section on the economic aspects of World War II.